So in the first part of this little two-parter, what I discussed was whether our Western societies are rape-cultured. I had a look at the definition that was on Wikipedia, which is a widely accepted definition. The definition that rape culture is a setting in which rape is pervasive and normalised due to societal attitudes about gender and sexuality, and discussed the way in which both the pervasiveness and the normalisation of attitude may have changed throughout history and also around the globe to discuss whether or not our Western societies are rape cultured and I arrived at the conclusion that they are not. But it seems to me unfortunately that a lot of discussions about rape culture just seem to ignore all of that. Rather than actually discuss those things which are relevant, they instead discuss things which are at best only tangentially or tenuously relevant and some of these things are concerned within this list here this is further down the wikipedia paragraph behaviors commonly associated with rape culture include victim blaming sexual objectification trivializing rape denial of widespread rape refusal to acknowledge the harm caused by some forms of sexual violence or some combination of these as soon as I read this, when I first read this uh, a couple of years ago, alarm bells immediately rang because the language is so unscientific uh, as, to, as to barely be uh, comprehensible. Behaviours commonly associated with. What does associated with mean? Associated with means a million different things to a million different people. Let me give you an example. Right, let's talk about pirates and piracy and pirate culture. Ha ha! Because I'm into that kind of thing having a one year old boy. And we could define piracy as the stealing of vessels on the high seas. It's got to be the high seas, hasn't it? Let's get into the theme of pirates. Some things that are commonly associated with pirates include parrots, pieces of eight, treasure chests and eye patches. But what does that actually mean to say that those things are associated with pirates? Well... If we look at parrots, what does it mean that parrots are associated with pirates and piracy? Does it mean, things that it could mean, for example, are that parrots cause piracy? Or it could mean that piracy causes parrots. So in either of those cases, there's some kind of causal relationship that we could be claiming. Or all we could be claiming is no causal relationship, but just that the presence of parrots are an indicator of the presence of pirates there. Okay, Those are just three things that it could mean, all very, very different things. And just the sheer fact that these things are associated, well, what actually does it mean? I think we understand with regard to parrots and pirates. All it really means is that people associate parrots with pirates in their minds and that is literally all it has to mean for that sentence to make any sense is that people have associated these things together and yet there is this really grotesque situation where people are evidencing rape culture and that societies are rape cultured not by evidencing a prevalence of rape or by evidencing a normalization of attitude but by evidencing that some of these other things are present we talked about in the first uh, uh, part of this video about Emily Buchwald and her definition. And if we have a look at her definition now, she encourages that she includes a lot of things here, uh, such as uh, sexual remarks, such as emotional terrorism, such as violence being seen as sexy. And it may well be that. Emily Buchwald associates sexual remarks with rape culture. And it may well be that Emily Buchwald in fact sees some kind of causal relationship between sexual remarks and rape culture, such that sexual remarks lead to rape culture, or that rape culture leads to sexual remarks. But here is the thing. It's still no good Emily Buchwald just pointing at sexual remarks and saying that is evidence of rape culture. If she does that, what she is doing is pointing at parrots and claiming in some ways that that evidences the presence of pirates. Here's some photos of parrots in South America uh, that I've got off Google. Is anybody suggesting that these in any way evidence the existence of pirates in the rainforest there? Of course it isn't. So here's the thing. If you want to demonstrate that rape is prevalent 
what you need to demonstrate is that rape is prevalent, right? Not that something else which might also be objectionable is prevalent. If you want to demonstrate that rape in some ways has been normalized, then what you need to demonstrate is that rape has been normalized, not some other thing which you've associated with it has been normalized, however objectionable that other thing might be. And this is the concern that I have. There are these things which are really, really hard to demonstrate, I suggest because they're not there. And in lieu of demonstrating them, what we end up is with these endless things. If we go back to our list of associated things, sexual objectification is just such an example. Just show that some that sexual objectification is taking place in a video game, for example, in the way that Anita Sarkeesian might do, and then just assume the rest. Why? Because sexual objectification is associated with rape culture. As far as I'm concerned, that isn't close to being good enough in terms of what you have to do. I want to consider victim blaming because this is interesting. Look, I'm being very dismissive of these things but that is not to suggest that some associations couldn't have some merit. So, for example, if victims of rape were victim blamed, okay, and victims of other crimes weren't victim blamed, then I'd have so I'd, I'd take that on board with some seriousness that something was going on there, okay. But that really doesn't seem to be the case. That is the claim that is made, but the way the claim is made is only ever to really look at victim blaming in terms of rape. In fact, if I said to you victim blaming, probably the first thing that you would think about would be rape. And a lot of victim blaming, it's so ubiquitous in terms of crime that a lot of the time we don't even realise that it's taking place. We don't even realise that we're doing it. So let me give you some examples. One of the examples that I always give when I discuss this is the example of if you have a virus on your computer, right? If you have a virus on your computer, nine out of 10 times, the first question that somebody will ask you is, how did you get that virus? You say that you got that virus from an email or something like that. And nine out of 10 times, the next question they will ask you is, did you have any antivirus software? And I'll bet you a pound to a pinch of shit that if you say that you didn't have any antivirus software, the next thing that you will hear within your ears will be something which is victim blaming. Now, you might not associate it as such because we're so used to it, but they will say something along the lines of, well, you only have yourself to blame. Why on earth didn't you have any antivirus software? Is that not just victim blaming, but the very worst kind of victim blaming? Because there are two kinds of victim blaming. There is the blaming the victim that, that diminishes in no way the crime of the person who committed the crime, but there is also that type of victim blaming that diminishes, that takes away the responsibility of the perpetrator of the crime. And by saying something to you along the lines of, well, you only have yourself to blame, what they're effectively doing is taking away the blame of the person who actually made the virus who the chances are they will never mention in the entire discussion that you have. Why? Because we regard viruses as inevitable, which is another really interesting thing to consider. It's regarded as a real kind of no-no with regard to rape culture. Any suggestion that rape is inevitable, as Emily Buchwald herself suggests, is an indication of rape culture. And yet this is something we do all over the place, do we not? We regard crimes as inevitable and we regard other things as inevitable. But that's not to suggest we don't rail against them. Cancer is inevitable. It is an inevitability that you will know some people, unfortunately, who will die of cancer. It happens to all of us. Cancer is an inevitability of life as it stands. But in no way does that suggest that we regard cancer as a, mo as a good in our societies. In no way does that suggest we won't try and actively reduce the amount of cancer. We just accept that as things stand, we can't entirely eliminate cancer. And such is the case here. Let me give you a couple of other examples of victim blaming that I've collated over the time. Here is one from the Quorn Neighbourhood Watch Society with a clip taken from the police. Have a read of this. Yet again, most of the village crimes are vehicle related and in too many cases involve insecure vehicles. The solution lies largely with the driver as most modern cars are difficult to enter without a key. So there you have it, folks.
okay? Let's not let's not teach car thieves not to steal cars. Let's t teach people not to have their cars stolen. Isn't that exactly the kind of thing that people regard as rape cultured? when that kind of advice is given with regard to the crime of rape. But here is the perhaps the most interesting example of the lot. I wrote a blog on rape culture. This was the first blog I ever wrote on rape culture and I'll try and show you the piece here. And as part of that, I talked about an inevitability that I had when I was growing up. And that inevitability was the inevitability as a young man of, of, being, of, of receiving some act of random violence. Because that, in actual fact, although sexual violence is more common amongst uh, uh, young women in, in their teens and 20s and 30s, in terms of non-sexual violence, you're more likely to experience that as a man. And in the cultures and societies I grew up in, there was a fair chance, not on any given occasion, but if you went out regularly, at some stage you were going to get a damn good hiding. Somebody would, some drunken guy would take it upon themselves to just jump upon you and try and beat you up. And this is something that would happen. And so I tried to get that across in this piece. And this is the response that I received here. And look at the wording of the response and look at how it's been took and how it's been manipulated. I talked about a random beating and it's been reported back to me quite unconsciously there as being involved in a fight. See how the emphasis is shifted there to a situation which suggests that in some ways that guys when they're involved in this kind of thing in some ways that well they're just as much to blame as the other person is involved. That's a crime of violence. That's why I've specifically shown you that the other two are kind of more property related. And so people will dismiss them. How can you possibly, how can you possibly set rape against these other things? That's a crime of serious violence. I suggest to you this happens with all crimes. We vi victim blame over all crimes. And that is why I find this a really unsatisfying claim that victim blaming with regard to rape evidences rape culture. Of course there is a particularly egregious stand of victim blaming. Well, you wore a short skirt, therefore you're act asking for it. And of course, that is an unconscionable thing to say. But I have to say with regard to things like that, I've heard things like that discussed a thousand times more than I've actually heard them said. How often are things like that actually said nowadays compared to how often they're repeated? Not very often, I would say. The same thing goes with a lot of these things here. Sexual objectification, you may regard that has that link, but you still need to demonstrate what you need to demonstrate. Denial of widespread rape is a classic one. That's a brilliant double bind situation there, isn't it? If you admit to widespread rape, then what you're admitting to is that society is rape cultured because rape is happening all over the place. If you deny widespread rape, then you're proving rape culture because that's one of the things that proves rape culture is the denial of widespread rape. I, I admire, I admire that kind of reasoning. But let me just go back to the central point in this. And I'll leave you with this. If you want to demonstrate that rape is prevalent, you need to demonstrate that rape is prevalent, not all the objectionable things which are not rape. If you wish to demonstrate that rape is normalized, you need to demonstrate that rape is normalized, not that other objectionable things which are not rape are normalized. Anything else you want to do, you can do, but you need to do some of those things if you wish to demonstrate that we are living in a rape culture. And those are the things which are not being done. These other things, these trivial, tenuous things are being done in lieu of those things. Okay, well, that concludes my little two-parter on rape culture. Thank you for watching if you've watched both parts. Bye for now.